So today we're going to be making a dual action controller like the one you're seeing now. This one is actually the prototype. I'm going to create one from two flashback controllers and for those who aren't familiar with it the dual action controller is basically something I put together that utilizes two circuit matrices inside the controller and it actually plugs into two controller ports which allows you to use the disc and the keypad at the same time and that makes a big difference for games like Night Stalker, AD&D Cloudy Mountain, and Tron Deadly Discs. So let's get started. So here we have our two donor flashback controllers. We'll start by taking these guys apart. Very simple. Four Phillips screws. I'm sure many of you have done this before to regular Intellivision controllers. snap there. Now your top cover, the disc that fell on the floor, spring, little rubber key buttons, side buttons, and you've got your circuit matrix in there. You take off the keypad cover. There's two more Phillips screws on the daughter board. The wiring connects to the circuit matrix. Take that off. And the whole thing kind of just lifts out. And then we can remove this. And bottom half. You want to save this little clear guy because that goes between the disc layer. Otherwise you'll get some weird functions from the disc when you use it. And now we're going to remove the daughter board from the wires. Now here's a look at the daughter board. We're going to take these wires off, these nine wires, but we're also going to take off this little connector for the matrix because we're going to reuse that in the dual action controller minus the daughter board. All right, so I've got my desoldering station set up here, heated up. We're going to start with the wires. are a little stubborn. There we go. Now we're going to take off that little connector. As I said, we need that for the controller. It's a little harder to get that one off than the wires. In case you don't know, a desoldering gun basically uh, has a constant vacuum that's sucking the solder through as you heat it up, so it pulls it off very easily, unlike using solder wick or something like that. Now we're just going to bend the pins on these little connectors straight, flat. So they're just kind of sticking up straight now. Now these still have a little bit of solder left on them, but I'm going to add a little bit more just because it helps get the wire to stick to it in the next step. And obviously I'm doing the other one too, but you don't need to see that. And I'm going to want to do the same thing to these, these wires. There's a little bit of solder left on them, but they're a little bit too short strip part. I don't know if you can see that. My camera doesn't want to focus. But I'm going to strip the ends a little bit more and then tin the wires with some solder. Not exactly exciting. 
So we won't have to see all of this. So now we'll tin these wires. A little solder on the ends. And so forth and so on. Now another thing I need to do is trim off one edge of this little stress relief thing for the wires because we're going to have two of these together coming out of the bottom half of the controller on the top and it helps them fit together better. Nothing terribly complex here. Exacto knife and just trim off a little rubber. Not a big deal. It's easier to do this before you solder it back to the wall to the little connector. There's not like a specific amount that I take off, but just enough so it sort of flattens one side a little bit. That should do it. If you can pick that up on the camera, but just took off a little edge there, and I'll do that to the other one. Of course, before we solder the wires to this, I need to file down the edges just a little bit to make this thinner because these two things have to stack on top of each other inside the controller case and it's a pretty tight fit and there's some filing in the case as well so it's not terribly exciting but I'll show you that now. Now I just use a regular hand file nothing fancy and gently take this little guy and move it back and forth. You could do this with a sander, sandpaper whatever, flip it over, but you want to do it by hand because you don't want to take too much off and then get down to the actual metal of the pins, that would be problematic. Just want to take a little bit off these layers. It's not an exact amount, I may have to go back and do a little bit more of this if it doesn't fit inside the case once I get to that stage. But I try to take enough off now so I don't have to do that because it's a lot harder to do this once you solder the wires to it. You can see the little plastic shavings there. Eh, just about there. Got really close on this bottom half. I need to get a little bit more on this edge. It's looking pretty good. Tiny bit more here maybe. Say that one's done. And we'll do the other one. Okay, so now we're going to solder the wires to the little matrix connector. And you'll notice that the pins are kind of on the top here as I'm holding it, as opposed to this way where they're on the bottom. And that's the way it's going to be in the controller with the pins on the top. So that's the way I will solder the wires. And I'll have information about the exact wire color and order that you need to solder these. And these are designed to work out of the box with the flashback. If you want to use them on the regular Intellivision, you'll need to either get some of my adapters, make your own, or solder it in such a way that it's native to the Intellivision. Pretty straightforward here. The first pin we're going to do brown. And as I've I already tinned the wires and the connectors. This is usually fairly quick. Brown. Red is next. We have red. We're going to go orange. And some of these wires in the flashback controllers, the orange looks more pink, but uh, you can tell it from the red easily. Got the orange on there. I'm going to do yellow. Next is green. Come on, green. Then we're going to go blue.
And if you don't tin the wires and the pins ahead of time, <laughs> you need a third hand to hold the solder, the iron, and the wire. It doesn't work out so well. Okay, after blue comes black. Let me get gray. And finally, white. So that order again, with the pins on the top, starting from the one closest to me, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, black, gray, and white. Now I'll do the other one and move on to the next step. I like to do a little continuity test, make sure all the wires are working, going all the way through to the plug. So we'll do that now. Test the blue wire here. We'll test yellow, and we'll test brown, and white, and red, green, orange, gray, Finally, black. Looks good. I'll do the other one. Okay, time to trim a little bit out of the bottom part of the controller housing. There's little areas along the side where all the, the keypad cover and the matrix have to squeeze down in. So when you're layering two matrices in there, plus the keypad cover, it gets a little tight. So I just take a little bit of these edges off. Again, a sharp hobby knife does the trick. You could try to file this if you want, but not really necessary. As I say, nice and sharp hobby knife, this one's feeling a little bit dull now. <laughs> you don't have to take a lot off. Just enough to make a little extra space for that second matrix. And you can always do like a trial fitting to see if they fit. Alright, now it's time to do some Dremel work on the controller housing. First we're going to take a little bit off of here. You want to make sure you don't go too far. Come through the other side. Of course if you do, when you're making the dual action, you'll have two of these. So if you screw one up the first time, you got a chance to do it again. And on this one, we're going to take out this screw post and that screw post. Those were for the daughter board. And we're going to take some material off here as well. Just kind of make this a lot bigger to be able to fit those wiring connectors and all the wires and the two layers of circuit matrix that go on top. And always remember kids, eye protection. I also like to take a hand file and just kind of smooth out any little minor areas I might have missed. And at least I know I won't take too much off doing it this way. You could actually do the whole thing with the file if you don't have a Dremel. It just takes a little bit longer. And this again is not an exact amount I take off. It's I may have to do a little bit more as I put the controller together if things don't fit correctly. But it's just showing you the basic idea behind it. This one's looking pretty good. I didn't come through the other side, so we're okay there. So, next step.
the other part of the controller housing that we need to change. So we need to widen this hole a little bit and kind of add a second one. And I do it with the file and with the Dremel. I'm going to change the tip on the Dremel to do this one. Pretty good. We'll do a little test fitting here in a minute. Kind of do it so you have two little circles there. You widen the original one a little bit more. That's probably about good. Okay, so this is kind of the trickiest part of this whole thing: is cutting away the parts of the one matrix that's not going to use the disc, and you've got to trim two separate layers just so and only cut the traces that need to be cut and leave the other ones intact. So, got to be really careful with that. For starters, a lot of these are sort of melted together in a couple of places. You can peel that off. Just be careful that you're not tearing an area that has circuit traces on it. As you can see, there's really only two layers that have the circuit traces. And this middle layer kind of masks off some of the traces so it only hits the buttons. But we're going to do the trimming now, so we'll start on this, this bottom layer here. For starters, I like to uh, lightly tape down the matrix opened so that I can just get to the layer I need to. And I put it on a little piece of cardboard with blue painter's tape for high contrast so I can see a little bit better the areas that I'm cutting and the areas that I don't want to cut. Now this bottom layer, you don't really have to worry about continuity around the circle because it kind of is already broken at points here and here and here and here. But you do want to take this part out. I try to leave a tiny bit of the outside of the circle showing there. I take the rest out sure our knife is nice and sharp and it's uh, something you want to do slowly and carefully if you cut the wrong trace you're gonna have trouble with that circuit and you can try to patch it with like a, a pen draws circuit material but it doesn't really work too well with these things so it's best just to be very careful when you cut. You can be conservative and leave a little bit more showing, but if you leave too much showing, and that's going to cut into the feel and the performance of the disc, because the disc has to go through this layer to get to the layer that's actually going to be left intact when we put the controller together. more here on this edge. It seems to be hung up there a little bit. And there you have it. Change this around a little bit and do the other part. 
Now this other layer to be a little bit more careful with because it has sections where the circuit connects to the other side so you want to make sure not to cut that little trace and there's another portion here where it comes down and it goes around here through that little part around here through that up here and back out if you cut any of those you're gonna have trouble with some of the keypad functions and the side button because these things are all interconnected and different combinations of buttons and keys and disk produce different signals in the output. Just don't cut through that outer edge of the circle. It'll be okay there. Turn this a little bit. Just take your time. Sure you're cutting the right part. And there you have it. get a decent view of these things on the camera. There's that layer and that layer. Of course this layer doesn't matter, it's just an in-between masking layer. Okay, now I'm going to check continuity. In this metal layer, you really only have to be concerned about these two outer traces. The circle doesn't matter. So we'll start with this outside one. As I said before, these don't need to be connected anymore because this is just for the disc. Okay, now we'll check the other one. This one has a little bit of the circle left. This is the one I told you not to trim away the whole circle, otherwise you run into problems. We'll check this outer one. Check this inner one. You can see that it makes it all the way around. So we are good. Okay, here are a few other pieces to the puzzle. This is actually some clear heat shrink tubing. I just cut it. It's going to go across the uh, connectors where the wires are. It'll keep the uh, bottom wires from touching any of the top wires. This is to mask off the keypad, kind of a thicker, stiff plastic. This is more like a freezer bag thickness. This will go on the matrix that I cut the disc portion out, just to make sure there are no connections there. And the keypad cover, I have to cut a little, a couple little notches out to make it fit better and to make sure that there's nothing really in the way of the side buttons getting through, because they have to go through kind of two layers to be activated. Alright, so as far as this goes, I just cut a couple little notches this way to help it fit in that lower housing better. And this doesn't have to be exact either. You can do some trial fitting. If it doesn't quite fit all in there, you can cut a little bit more out. notches that I cut there. Okay, now the fun part. 
well, actually, there's lots of fun parts. Putting the controller together. Now, the way this works is the bottom matrix is going to be for the side buttons and the disc. And the top one, the one that we cut up, is just for the keypad. So this keypad one, I have to mask off the side buttons. And you can do that with plastic, but it might slide. I tend to use some thick painter's tape. I'll do that now. So all you need to do, make sure you go on the side where the trace actually is, not on the back where it's just clear plastic, and put that tape over the traces for the buttons. Pretty simple. See where I did it there. There you go. And the other matrix, just putting this clear plastic sheet in between the conductive layers, like so. And you want to make sure that the holes here and here aren't covered, because that's where the mounting posts are in the bottom of the controller housing. So I'm going to make sure those line up. And there you go. And the other part that goes on this bottom piece for the disc is that little plastic ring I showed you earlier. That just goes down in there. Like that. Then we add the cut matrix to the top. Again. Line it up with those little posts, and then this piece goes between these two layers. Not absolutely necessary, but it makes sure that nothing accidentally touches on that disc section that's cut out. It also kind of protects the matrix a little bit below from pressure on the disc. I used to put those in the regular controllers, even as a kid, a little piece of thick freezer bag kind of plastic. So when you press down on the disc, it has something to absorb that pressing rather than just pressing right on the matrix. And it doesn't change the feel of the controller at all. It's still quite smooth, just like a normal disc would be. Okay, now that you've seen how that kind of all goes together, let's actually assemble this controller all the way. So these kind of slide back on like they were before. I'm going to make sure you have the brown as the first one. So put this one in there. Not forgetting our little plastic ring. Grab the other cable and the other matrix. Slide that one on there. Again, brown first. A little bit of a tight fit and this is kind of our test fitting to make sure that all this goes together I'll slide that one in there a little piece of plastic there let's try this on top also lines up with the posts Getting pretty thick here. We'll take the side buttons. This will help hold everything together. That way we can do our test fitting. And these buttons have a, uh, a little notch on one side. That goes down. You quickly realize that if you try to put them in the other way. They don't really go down very well. So, you can see, that's a very tight fit there, huh? So what I do is I take that little piece of heat, heat shrink that I mentioned earlier, put it down on this first layer, down below, and then the other wires sit on top. 
just to rule out any wires touching that shouldn't be. Then it comes down to making these things fit together, which may require some additional filing depending on how this goes now, or some additional trimming of the stress relief portion of the cable. It's really kind of trial and error until you get it right. I think I'm going to have to file a little bit more here. But essentially, kind of, kind of tuck the wires inside. This is really not designed to have 18 wires in here. But once you get it down to that level, then you can try fitting the top cover on to see if you've, in fact, filed away enough material to make it all go together. And it looks like we have, with the exception of the cutout for the cable. So we'll file a little bit more down and come back and try that again. Okay, made the cables fit. Filed that down a little bit more. Put the screws back in. One, two, three, four. And let's go test it out. Okay, I've got the test ROM up. Get the controller. Plug it in. One connector into each. I'm using my flashback adapters. So I've got this hooked up to an Intellivision 2. Here's the other. Alright. So, here's our controller. And we will try the disc first. You can see it's showing up on the left. All seems to be working. Side buttons, upper left, lower left, upper right. All right, and keypad, and you see it's showing up on the right side of the screen. Controller, well, it looks like controller two, but because they screwed up this test cart, controller one is actually registering on the right. So you can see I can press the disc and the keypad buttons at the same time. Look at that. It's a minor miracle. You might occasionally see some little glitches show up on the other controller, but that's just the nature of the Intellivision circuit matrix. They, if you press too many things at once, you might get some spurious readings, but for the most part, we're looking okay here. Yeah, see if you hold the side button down and you move the disc. This is true on a regular controller as well, but the Intellivision is smart enough to ignore those extra things there when you're using the disc and side buttons at the same time. As you can see, all the keys are working on controller 1, disk, and buttons on controller 2. Of course, it doesn't really matter which way you plug it in for most of the games. I suppose there might be a game where the keypad has to be plugged into controller port 1 or the disk, but you know, I haven't noticed that in the main games that I use this with, which would be Night Stalker, AD&D, Cloudy Mountain, and Tron Deadly Discs. So let's try out a game now. Okay, the only thing I would suggest on the dual action controllers, if you have something like the Cuddle Cart 3, which I've got up here now, make sure you press enter firmly enough to load the game. So there's Cloudy Mountain. Let's give it a shot here. No problem moving around here. some running. I hear a snake. There's a rat. So let's run away from the rat and shoot. There we go. Pick that up. See, your uh, muscle memory tells you to lift up the controller when you do certain actions. But you don't have to do that. So there's a snake here somewhere. Let's go over here. Oh, pick that arrow up. Now this game will occasionally, if you're running and and this has actually happened in the regular controllers too, sometimes you'll shoot an arrow when you're running. When running is used, uh, you press down on the side buttons. I don't see that anymore often with a dual action than I do with the regular controller. 
So, I'm running away. And I shot while I was running. Look at that. Of course, the blob killed me. But, you get the idea. Let's try another game. Night Stalker. There you go. Pick up my gun. I haven't lifted off the disc yet. That's my favorite strategy. Gun. You can see I'm clearly running while shooting, not letting up on the disc. You can chase your own bullets, look at that. back to the menu. Do some Tron Solar Sailor. Nope, not Solar Sailor. Tron Deadly Discs. This is probably the best game to use this controller for. Run and gun. No recognizer yet because I haven't run through the doors. But if it's your strategy to do so, you can just keep running. Running and gunning. Of course, later on when I get the cross doors open, then I tend to hang out in the doorways. Let's go open the rest of these. Bring that energy. Oops. Bring that recognizer out. Uh-oh. Better go heal through the door. Got hit twice. I love blocking discs. Alright, let's finish this guy off. Bring out the recognizer. Alright, I'm going to line my head up on this line. That puts me at the right height. Bye-bye. Anyway, you get the idea. That's a dual action controller.